Hi, it's Jeff here for VIP Vision. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction of the VIP Vision Panoramic Network Camera Series. Now when I say panoramic, or in this context, what I'm referring to are cameras that have multiple lenses and sensors that are then all combined into one big wide image. Now there's certain situations where this is advantageous, for instance if you've got a very long uh, driveway, you've got a very wide area that you want to actually view. Um, this is a, a convenient and neat way of uh, doing it with a single device rather than having to install multiple cameras. Um, now if I just, I'll just flip across here just to show you what we're looking at here. So the first two cameras in this range are our 6 megapixel and our 8 megapixel mon uh, models. So this is our 6 megapixel mon model here. You'll see if you look at that a little more closely, you can actually see that we've got three individual lenses and sensors built into the one camera. And if you take a look at the 8 megapixel, you'll see the same, except in this case we actually have four separate sensors. Now, in each case they're only covering 180 degrees, so uh, as you can imagine, the 8 megapixel can capture a little more detail uh, than the 6 megapixel. And we're doing it with more cameras, so we um, have the ability to, I suppose, share that among more sensors. Um, so, just to give you an idea of what we are talking about when we're talking about panoramic. So this is a this is a panoramic camera set up in a, a, a driveway. It's actually the driveway here. Now you'll see that this is a fairly long, long driveway or car park and you can see that you can see all the way from the road out on the right hand side here, all the way back to the other edge of the building. Now this is a 6 megapixel camera, 6 megapixel um, unit. Uh, it is worth noting that Obviously, like we said, we're divided up into three separate images that are then spliced together. So if you look at it this way, we've got one here, two between those two points, and then three on this side here. So we do lose a little bit in the cropping, but essentially uh, we end up with something that's close to a 3.8 megapixel image. And just to show you what we can do with that, is if I zoom down here on this number plate, you can see that we can we can still make out the plate even though we've got a very big a very big viewing angle. I'll just do that again just a little bit closer. There you go. And I'll just right click back out. So that's that's what you can do with these panoramic cameras. That's that's the, the field of view that we're looking at. Now just to go a little more in depth with what you what you receive with these cameras, so we get the supplied with Dynabolts, as these are quite a hefty camera, we supply the units with Dynabolts out of the box. Um, I'll just flip across to the other camera here so you can see it a little better. So, as I said before, um, Dynabolts supplied with the units. Uh, we supply a uh, star security bit um, screwdriver just for adjusting the units, setting them up. Um, an analog out for a test monitor. If you're still using an analog test monitor, this is just plugs into the base of the unit, which I'll show you in a second. Um, a power adapter, uh, basically just to split out our um, DC barrel jack to, um, a, you know, if you're wiring a, a figure eight or something like that into the product. Uh, this is our little rubber boot to cover up our RJ45 or our Cat, Cat 5, Cat 6 connector on the unit so that we don't let any water. It's very important that you fit this. Quick start guide. Read that. Uh, full user manual on a CD and some software, Smart PSS, and the config tool uh, for setting up the camera, and the all important template. So that's what comes with the unit. Now I'll just briefly go into how, um, or some, I suppose, features physically of the unit. So I'll just jump back. So I'll show you on the 8 megapixel model first. Now you'll note that the uh, as I mentioned before, we've got our four separate lenses. You can see, now these are, it's worth noting these cameras are actually full infrared as well. So if you look at the base, you'll see that this is all uh, sort of uh, black, shiny black here. It's actually transparent to infrared. So we've got infrared LEDs on the base of the unit and wrapping around the unit as well. Um, configuration slot on the underside here. Um, opens with the supplied cover, supplied screwdriver, and as I mentioned before under here we actually have our SD card slot, 
um, the connector for our video on this side video reset as well and this one here's just a little debugging connector don't worry about that one there let's put this one back on loosely now as for the mounting bracket itself if you look in the back here we actually have uh, three degrees of freedom so we can tilt the camera back and forth we can swivel at this junction in here and if for some reason we need to flip the whole camera over we need to flip the bracket over we do also have a swivel in the back as well now these are all adjusted by the screws on the side of the unit here you can also adjust the rain shield on the top of the unit if you want to you can slide that back just by um, moving that screw in the top Now I'll just show you on the 6 megapixel model what cables actually come out of the back of this. So first one we have here is an audio input. Now this accepts line level audio. So you could feed line level audio in here and have it stream with the camera, with the camera image. We have power, so this is DC power that can be supplied in the back of the unit. It actually will accept DC 12 volts or 24 volt AC if you want to use 24 AC. You keep in mind that usually we'll be using power over ethernet and you won't require that port. Uh, we have an audio output. Now this is line level audio out. Again, we could feed this into, a, um, into a, an amplifier and then we could feed that to speakers if we wanted to. We have our basic I.O. here. So we have some uh, just alarm inputs and outputs so we can feed that to a, a relay, for instance. We can trigger a relay and then trigger something bigger off that. We also have our alarm input so we can trigger that and then um, either set the camera to record or send us alerts or something like that. And the all important RJ45 or um, 8P8C connector on the back here to connect your data. Now this is a PoE camera, 802.3AT class 4. Um, so you are going to, if you're going to run down the PoE route, you do need to supply a suitable injector or switch which can source at least 25 watts. So that's these, these two cameras. Um, I'll just briefly show you the web interface for the camera just so you can see what it looks like. Now, web interface, much like the MVR that I showed you a moment ago, um, we have all of the, you know, we can, we can see how wide this image is here. We've got, like I said before, one image, two images, and a third image. Now, you'll see that it's just actually been triggered on IVS. So it's just detecting a moving object. And if I, I can do playback, if I had an SD card installed, I could do playback and obviously go to the setup menu. I can flip between substreams. So this is a lower quality stream and another lower quality stream here. Let's go back to main. And some of the jumpiness here is just by the way that we're recording this video. It's normally very smooth. This camera will do up to uh, 20 frames at full resolution. So, um, differences between the 6 megapixel and 8 megapixel, obviously, other than the fact that one's 6 megapixel and one's 8 megapixel, there are also some important differences with regards to sensors. Now, as I mentioned, the 8 megapixel uses four sensors and the other unit uses three sensors. Um, so, obviously, that increases cost, but it does also give you a much better quality image because you've got four sensors covering the same area as three. Um, in addition to that, the, four, the 8 megapixel unit with the four sensors also uses larger sensors. So uh, sensors which um, are, of a, yeah. are bigger, so have much smaller pixels, uh, much larger pixels I should say, which give you much bigger pixel wells, so you actually have less noise on the 8 megapixel version. The 8 megapixel version can also do true wide dynamic range. Um, so whilst you do have digital wide dynamic range on the 4, uh, you do have true wide dynamic range on the on, sorry, on the 6, you do have true wide dynamic range on the 8 megapixel camera. Um, but yeah, both of these cameras are really versatile cameras, good for certain situations. Obviously, it's not great for every job, but there's, there's certain situations where you just want to, you know, it's difficult to pull multiple cables or you've already got something that's existing from a, you know, maybe a PTZ. Um, you really want a big wide shot of the area. You don't want to install multiple cameras. Uh, this is probably the one that you want to go for. So if you'd like any more information on either of these products, either the 6 or the 8 megapixel camera, 
best place to look is the VIP Vision website. So that's vip-vision.com, vip-vision.com. And then just look for the products there. Uh, I'll just jump across briefly to that website just to show you. So as you can see, we've got the uh, eight megapixel loaded up here. We've got all the specifications down the right hand side here. For instance, our, um, our frame rate and stream size. Um, obviously we've got our dimensions in these images here. Scroll down, there's a bit more information. And we've also got the six megapixel version as well with all the same sort of specifications. And if you're looking for demo footage, here it's at the bottom of the page here as well. So you can download from there. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, please subscribe if you like these videos or if you'd like any more information about them, leave a comment below. Thanks.